In physics, it is said that there are four forces in the standard model. There's gravity, there's the electromagnetic force, there's the weak force or weak interaction, as I prefer to think of it, and also the strong force. And so ultimately, we hope to unify all four forces into a standard set of uh, equations, or even a single equation. And it turns out that it's very easy to do that with a strong force, um, as I'm going to show here. And that's because when people are considering the strong force, they don't consider the Casimir effect. And that's because people have been denying the existence of the Casimir effect for most of the first 50 years that it was known about from when it was published in 48 until it was proven experimentally in the late 90s. And for those who are not familiar with the Casimir effect, it happens because quantum fluctuations push on bodies and that the pressure that they cause can change depending on the geometry. And in particular, we have a two-plate example. If you have two plates that are close together, they exclude longer wavelength quantum fluctuations that can't fit in there. They also exclude some that are destructively interfering with themselves. And because of that, there are, there's less van der Waals pressure pushing the plates apart than pushing them together. So if you have two plates that, once you get around a micron apart, then we can start to measure a force pushing together. And now the experiments normally work with uh, a sphere in a plate because it's easier to control distance to a sphere than to try to keep two plates parallel. And for those who aren't familiar with van der Waals forces, they happen because of electric charge dipoles. And so if you have light charges that repel, which causes dipoles to contract a little bit, and if you have opposite charges, they attract, which causes dipoles to expand slightly. And this causes the dipoles, quantum dipoles in space, to jiggle a little bit, which causes a force, and the force pushes on solid objects, and the solid objects can move. And so we can think of any motion of solid objects due to forces as being this type of van der Waals force interaction where there's differentials in van der Waals pressure. And so given the differential in pressure, um, Polder, out of Casimir's partner, he determined the actual calculation for the two-plate example, which is this here. The Casimir force is h bar c pi squared a over 240 d to the fourth. And the important thing here to know is it has d to the fourth in the denominator, the distance to the fourth. That's the distance between the plates. So as the distance goes to zero, the Casimir force goes to infinity. And since we're talking about the strong force, notably between two protons, two protons are both positively charged. And because they have like charges, two protons repel. So we would not normally expect two protons in space to be attracted to one another due to the Coulomb force alone. There has to be an additional force interaction. And the Coulomb force is simply described by this equation, F equals the Coulomb constant, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, um, times the two charges multiplied by each other divided by the distance squared. And so now, now there's a somewhat different thing in the Coulomb force, it's the distance between the center of the protons while in the Casimir effect, it's the distance between the surfaces. Because when we're looking at two spheres, we're, we're looking at the, the distance between the inner spherical surfaces. So, what we have is a situation where the Casimir effect gets stronger with distance to d to the fourth, while the Coulomb force gets stronger with distance to d squared. So, ultimately, at some distance, they're going to cross, 
and the Caspian effect is going to become stronger than the Coulomb force. And so it's often said when people talk about Casimir effect, especially on YouTube videos and, and other media, they say the Casimir effect is a very weak force. Uh, no, it's not. Not if you're talking about really close distances. It, it's an extremely strong force. And it turns out it's extremely strong force at about one femtometer, which is 10 to the minus 15 meters, which is the distance between protons and a nucleus. Um, so we know that the, the Casimir effect must be accounted for within a nucleus because protons scatter. Protons are known to scatter light and particles, and so they must also scatter quantum fluctuations. And so if two particles scatter quantum fluctuations, they're going to participate in van der Waals forces because they're going to exclude um, quantum wavelengths in between the two particles. Because protons are known to scatter at the charge radius, we have to account for Casimir forces when we're looking at the strong forces within the atomic nucleus. And because neutrons are the same size, the force is going to be similar between neutrons and between neutrons and protons. So we consider a case where we have two spherical surfaces and with Casimir effect, we're looking at the inner surfaces and that distance there. In the proximity force approximation equation I'm using, it assumes that each little section of that is similar to the two plate example, which allows us to come up with a solution that's an approximation. Now this approximation does not consider Van der Waals forces along the external surfaces. So this equation only accounts for part of the total Van der Waals forces pushing two protons together. So it's only a, a partial solution. Uh, I have not yet completed a complete solution. And if you know how to perform the complete solution of all the Van der Waals forces between two spheres, I would like to co-author a paper, please get in touch with me, either through email or uh, in the comments section. Anyway, in the force approximation equation, the energy is related to the same set of constants, h bar c pi squared, but it's over 1,440, and that accounts for the geometrical change you have because of the curvature of the surfaces. And we also have a somewhat different uh, term where we have pi a squared, where a is the radius, divided by d squared times 2a plus d. And you, so you notice in the energy term, you have d three times instead of four times in the force term. And what we can do is rather than try to convert this into force, we can stepwise at increments of say 0.1 femtometer, calculate the energy, and then convert it to force in order to compare it to the Coulomb repulsion. And that tells us at what point the Casimir force becomes stronger than the Coulomb repulsion. And it turns out that that point is 2 femtometers, or 2, or not, 2.7 femtometers. Uh, 2.7 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. And this force relates very closely with the known range of the strong force, which is approximately 3 femtometers at, at the outer range. And once two protons become more than 3 femtometers apart, they, the, they tend to disassociate. And so that's how close range it is, and it turns out that the Casimir force matches up with that very closely. As I said, once you include all the other Van der Waals forces, it, that should get it from 2.7 to very close to 3, um, I'm quite convinced. And also in terms of the, the energy or force, the Casimir force is about 87 times stronger than the Coulomb repulsion at half a femtometer. And so this is very similar to the known strength of the 
strong force, which is about 100 times stronger than, than the Coulomb repulsion. And so if, if we are accounting for the Casimir forces, that accounts for almost all of the strong force. And once we do a complete calculation of the two-sphere equation, I'm pretty convinced it will account for nearly 100% of the strong force. And so, in that case, we have a situation where the Casimir effect is part just a simple electromagnetic force. Well, not that simple, but it's electromagnetic phenomena. And it becomes a very simple matter then to consider the strong force uh, between nucleons in the nucleus part of the electromagnetic theory. And it's much simpler than the current way of looking at it. Now we still have particle exchanges going on where a proton turns into neutrons, neutron, neutrons turn into protons. And in quantum field theory, this occurs in a way that was first proposed by Fermi and Yang, that a proton, any proton pair can convert a proton to a neutron and vice versa, cause them essentially to look like they change places. And but it's also true that an electron positron pair will cause a proton to convert to a neutron and a neutron to a proton. So quantum particle carriers can cause this particle exchange to occur. Um, and so you can end up with Yukawa potentials, as Yukawa predicted in the 30s, um, that contribute somewhat to the strong force. But because the Casimir effect is so strong, it appears that the Kawa potentials are actually a much smaller contribution to the total strong force and um, not the major contribution that it's thought to be under the, the current standard model of strong force theory. And I, I won't get into the details of, of other types of particle interactions. I'll talk about that in another video. So anyway, it's a very simple matter to prove that the Casimir effect is equivalent to the strong force. And it's a somewhat more complex matter to do the total two-sphere calculation, but that's something that either I'll do or hopefully someone else will, will follow and do sometime in the near future. And so unifying strong force with electromagnetic theory is a fairly trivial exercise, as I've shown here. I have a paper where I wrote about it in a little more detail. I'll, I'll put a link in the comment section so that you can read it. And I also uh, talk about this in my three books on um, quantum field theory um, that I'll put up on the screen at the end. So uh, I hope you like this. Uh, it's one of a series of videos I'm going to do that's going to talk about how to unify the four theories of physics uh, um, forces into a single force, the electromagnetic force. And so it's, it turns out the strong force is pretty simple to deal with. So if you like my video, please like, share, subscribe. I am an independent researcher, so if you want to support me on Patreon, I appreciate it. And as I said, I, I have some books um, that you can buy if you want to learn about more about quantum field theory from, from those resources. And my most recent book, uh, Goodbye Quarks, The Onion Theory, is on a particle theory I developed trying to see if it was possible to develop a theory where there's only electrons and protons and that you can account for them in terms of relativistic onium orbiting compounds. And I found that it works quite well. In fact, it works much better than the quark theory. Um, so if you're interested in particle theory, you might look into that. So I appreciate you listening. Thanks.